Hi, we're Mitch and Jan. In 2023, we retired from our corporate jobs and sold everything we owned. We just spent the winter slow traveling Europe and Southeast Asia, and we have now returned home for the summer to live in our converted sprinter van, Sadie. We hope you enjoy following our adventures at home and abroad. And we hope to inspire, inform, and entertain you along the way. Hello friends. Hello. So we are today on the western shores of Ontario um, at Lake Huron. So last night we stayed at the Pinery Provincial Park. It was rainy, <laughs> so we didn't do any filming. Uh, we did take a quick stroll to the beach, but it is a beautiful day today and we're actually headed up the coast and we're gonna take you to a few beach towns along the way. We're gonna start our adventure now. We're just headed north a few kilometers to take us to the town of Grand Bend and we'll see what we can find there on this beautiful sunny day. Okay, so I'm not sure if the camera is doing justice, but it is so windy here. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, we're here at the very end of May, so it's not summer yet, and you can tell on a day like today, it's very windy here at the beach, and it's a little chilly. Yep. <laughs> so the beach is empty, but we're basically, we're up here right now on, there's a viewing platform, I guess you'd call it, that's sort of like a story or two high. You can look at the beach, you can see the children's park, um, they've really done a nice job down by the waterfront. It looks like lots of improvements in the last few years with a community stage where there's live music played. Most nights, I believe, in the summer. A uh, nice walking path. And the beach here is free to enter. However, the parking, um, we just parked over in one of the parking lots. And what did it cost? It was $7 for an hour, so quite expensive. Or $30 for, for the day. The day. So, and it is important, there's no free parking in Grand Bend. Years and years ago, there used to be spots you could still find, but it is such a busy beach town these days that free parking just isn't a thing. In fact, Mitch was looking at the population stats. Yeah, and it's like 3,000 people or a little over 3,000 people. And in the summer, it jumps up to around 50,000 people, which is insane. So crazy tourist destination, but for good reason. It is a beautiful, long, Sandy Beach, um, arguably one of the best um, that we would have here in Ontario. Um, killer sunsets because we're facing west. Um, so yeah, and Grand Bend has lots of little eateries, um, retro places, really nice shopping. There's actually a relatively new winery. I'm not sure when that opened up. There's a winery in town. So it really has everything you want. And as far as staying, there's hotels, there's cabins, there's campgrounds, there's like anything to fit any budget. So I think we're gonna go and try out one of these eateries. Well, yeah, we saw one, uh, which is, you know, right next to the beach and it's called the Growling Gator. Salad. Basically having a Greek salad with a little uh, additional grilled chicken breast and we're back in Canada we've got two Coronas so what's our price point at here? Uh, well I think the Coronas were I think they were $8.14 each no, I'm not sure. $41. Cents. Or $8.41 <laughs> um, and I think each of our dishes was about 20 Canadian dollars or 22 Canadian dollars um, so definitely uh, little sticker shock compared to uh, Southeast Asia and uh, Europe. 
Anyway, it looks good. We have these amazing beach views here at the Growling Gator in Grand Bend, so we're gonna go dig in. Well, we made good work of that. Yes, we obviously picked this place for its beach vibe and beach views, and it's super windy today, but we have this glass, so we can still see the beach, but we are not being blown away, and it's warm here in the sun when the wind is being cut. So, yeah, they have quite an extensive menu, everything from burgers and wraps to salads, big drink selection, so I think there's really something for everyone here. I definitely saw a veggie burger on the menu, so vegetarians will be happy, and like Mitch said, there seems to be lots of cute um, and lovely dining places um, along the strip. This one is just on the beach, the Growling Gator. Um, there is another one just across Willie's. Doesn't seem to be open yet. Looks like it would be a good vibe as well, but we definitely picked this for the vibe and the view, but it uh, didn't disappoint. Yeah, so I think now, I think we're gonna uh, head to uh, Bayfield and uh, we'll take you along and uh, show you uh, what we see. Yes. I honestly do wish we had time to go check out the Dark Horse Winery. It looks just gorgeous in the building there. They do also have a patio and a menu. We were into the Beach Vibe today, um, and they do have wine tastings there. So definitely something I'd like to come back to, and if we had more time, we'd go check that out. Cheers. Cheers. We're here in beautiful little Bayfield, Ontario. So we're just up the Blue Water Highway, number 21 from Grand Bend. And so we are at Clan Gregor Square here in Bayfield. And you can see it's just a beautiful park, um, sort of at the center. We're gonna take a little walk, hopefully do most of this heritage trail walk and just show you the shops and the sights of beautiful Bayfield and some beach. down to Pioneer Park in Bayfield and we're right by the lake and the views are spectacular. Uh, so definitely do this little trail if you're in Bayfield. It doesn't take long and it's beautiful. Just even the houses, eh, in the neighborhood. Yeah. That's a so, beautiful village. So pretty. So we're gonna show you the lake. In Bayfield, you are where we are now up on the bluff. Uh, so we'll be looking down and I think we'll take some stairs down and go look at the beach a little closer even though it's super windy. So you can see in all over Bayfield at the end of the roads, where they come to an end at the bluff, there are quite a few staircases throughout town, um, usually with some parking spaces by them. And the parking is free, and it's a very windy day, but there is Lake Huron. The Malta ran aground near Pioneer Park during a violent storm in November 1882. Local residents rescued a parrot and a crew of 10. Oh, a parrot! And this is the rudder off of that ship. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. Nice. Okay, so if you find yourself here in Pioneer Park and you're following the trail, you can stay go through the park and end up on the road. But the true trail, we're gonna go down these stairs along the beach 
um, to the inlet. And hopefully come out near the marina, I think. That is our hope. It seems to be where the trail goes, so let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna scrap that plan because the seas are stormy and rough and there is no beach no. where the trail is. I will show you. The rocks meet the beach there today because the waves are coming in so hard so we can't get through that one strip. So we're going back and we're gonna go the long way and that crazy guy out there is going in the water. That specifically says over there not to cross up on the higher land. So, um, we won't do that. Plan B, we're gonna go back up the stairs. <laughs> Fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. How many did you get? 117 stairs. So many I counted as well. 117 stairs up from the beach. Okay, so we're gonna take the Mare Street walkway since we could not get down on the beach. It says it links Bayfield's main street to the river, lake, and south here. Walk to the marina. So basically we are headed down to the marina. So this is a very sloped crushed gravel trail. Um, very nice walking, but again, it, it is sloped. So accessibility is for people to judge for themselves. But it's beautiful in here, all these cedars. Always important to note. Public washrooms. And a water bottle fill station. Oh, yeah. Oh, which is a nice added touch, Mayfield. This is the inlet river coming out to the lake. Um, a lot of boats, a lot of slips, but they're still pretty empty. There's a few boats in there, but it's certainly not filled up like it will be come summertime. that is down in Grand Bend, it's super sandy. Bayfield is very different. It's rocky, um, it's smooth, rocky lake pebbles, uh, lots of driftwood. So definitely a more rustic beach and not the sandy glory of, uh, yeah. Grand, of Bend. Grand Bend. Yeah. But so Still not beautiful. Beautiful beach. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those who love a nice sandy beach, that is not what you're gonna find here in Bayfield. <laughs> been on the Bayfield Trail and I think there's like eight of these blocks um, and this one's actually really interesting it talks about prohibition in Bayfield and up until I think it was June 1973 Bayfield was a dry village so I'm glad we came in 2024 <laughs> and not 1972 because then we wouldn't be able to have a glass of wine yeah there's even a story about um, a family that ran a cider mill and then fermented pulp was like a byproduct and they would use it in their garden for mulch. But people had like pigs and cows and chickens that weren't always well kept in the yards and they would get loose and apparently the pigs would go to this mulch and then they would get very intoxicated and it literally says and cause all sorts of damage throughout the village. And would even interrupt church service on Sundays. Oh, oh yeah, there's squeals. <laughs> it was just a bunch of drunk pigs creating havoc through Bayfield. Oh, too funny. Okay, so when Prohibition ended, like we talked about earlier, the Albion Hotel was the first place that was issued a liquor license. We're actually gonna see if we can go for a drink at the Black Dog. I've been to the Black Dog a couple times and it's just a great vibe, great spot. So we're gonna go check it out. So interesting enough, even though Batefield is on the water, unlike Grand Bend, you cannot find a local eatery um, or a place to wet your whistle that is uh, by the water. There used to be a place called the Docks but it closed down. I'm not sure if that was during COVID or when, but um, that was down by the marina. Um, but 
on this cute little shopping street, Bayfield Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of really nice little eateries and one of our faves, like Mitch said, Black Dog, so we'll head in now. Welcome to Godrich. We have made it to Godrich. <laughs> so Godrich is a little town. It's the biggest of the towns we visited today. It's about 8,000 8, people. Yeah. Again, I think the population increases a bit in the summer, sure. not quite to the extreme that Grand Bend does, but this is a lovely lakeside town in the summer. We are here right now in what's called the square. I believe, what? or the circle. Well, I call it a circle. It's, <laughs> a, it, it's a giant sort of like uh, like traffic circle. And I'm from Kapuskasing, and we have a circle in the center of town. There's some cute restaurants and shops in this yeah. square. We'll uh, head down to the water and see what else we can see and All right. what else Goddard has to offer. Let's go. All right. Just checking out the map here of Godrich. We're parked down by St. Christopher's Beach in Godrich. There seems to be three main beaches in Godrich. There's Rotary Cove Beach, um, and then St. Christopher's Beach, and then Godrich Main Beach. There's paid parking all along here. Um, we are after 5 p.m., so we don't have to park. We so out. we don't know how much to tell you parking is, but it looks like there is a gorgeous and very long walkway. Mm -hmm all along this beach. Anyway, check this out. The water is so like blue, it's a different color. And like, Goderich is, it does have, I believe a salt, salt. mining industry. So that is visible down here. So there's a bit of an industrial uh, vibe Thank happening. You. If you look that way at the beach, that's all sort of the salt mine. And this way is just peace. Now, Bayfield was definitely a mix of sort of your pebbles and sand. This is just pebble, pebble, pebble. It's very like European beach style. Really nice, soft, water-worn rocks, um, but not a sandy beach, but absolutely gorgeous, so. <laughs> there's a few other attractions in Goddard. So there's definitely, there's a Huron County Museum. Not sure what's in there. Um, if you're looking for cultural things to do, there's also, which we think is cool and we might go by, but we're probably too late for it today, is the, the jail. Huron County Jail. And, that was apparently where the last hanging in Canada took place. So weird and somber, but also just a historical spot, but it's got a very cool shape. It's like a hexagon or an octagon. So that's another attraction that you can check out here in Goderich. But we also, there's supposed to be a lighthouse here. So we're also gonna go and try to find that. All right, let's do it. The water is so By my count, we're at 92 stairs. <laughs> and we have this many. Woo, left to go. So 
So we're coming up here. This is an old CN or CPR rail station that was in Goderich. They actually moved this whole building intact 250 meters to where it is now. They've turned it into a restaurant. It's right along the beach. Whoa, that would have been quite a feat. It was like original. I believe it was triple brick, they said the building was, and weighed, I don't know, a couple tons? Uh, I forget. Oh, well, a lot more now, I think. But anyway, yeah. so crazy, and that was just in 2013. And we did look, you can Google that and see a couple shots of them with it on the flatbed. So, pretty cool history here in Godrich. <laughs> Okay, so we are at the Huron Historic Jail. It was like a two minute drive from where we just were. It is very closed. Hours are only till 4.30, so get here before 4.30, don't get here after five like we are. across the road that's a big bridge over there I actually think that is a walking bridge and it has a name I believe it was an old rail bridge um, that is now a walking bridge it's called the Massatung bridge it's part of the trail system around Godridge anyway just beautiful so that would be a beautiful walking or biking trail So we are just down the road from Godrich, only, I don't know, five minutes? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, north of Godrich at Point Farms Provincial Park. Um, we're gonna get set up for the night and hopefully we're gonna get lucky and see an amazing Lake Huron classic sunset. Best sunsets in all of Ontario, bar none. It's gotta be sun setting over the lake. And uh, yeah, we're gonna roll on in and get ourselves an amazing sight. So our campsite is pretty nice. It's basic. We do have two picnic tables, which we don't always get, a fire pit. We did come in late and no one was actually working at the um, registration office. That doesn't always happen, but this is a smaller park. So anyway, we're just gonna have to go and register and pay in the morning. They leave you a map that shows you which sites are available and you just go drive and pick one. So luckily we had already gone online and we knew the site was available. It was still available when we got here. So. That's our night, and again, it's looking very promising for a lake here on sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we've talked about cost for provincial parks, but uh, so this is an electric site. We normally don't take an electric site, but uh, this one was available, and like Jan said, it had good sun and all that kind of stuff. So, forty-eight ninety-five plus tax um, for the site for a night, so which is not bad at all. Unless we sneak out of here before they open. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> A way to save on camping. <laughs> A way to save camping fees. I'm just kidding. We wouldn't do that. We support the provincial parks and we do that with our camping fees. So hopefully we'll be coming back to you um, down by the water for sunset. Okay, we'll see you there. And that ended our day along the shores of Lake Huron. We hope you enjoyed this beach town tour and join us next week for part two as we continue to more beach towns along the Sunset Coast. Mm -hmm.